This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I am so excited about what we're going to be studying in the Word of God this week. The Bible is just so powerful. You know, the older I get, the more I fall in love with the Word of God. My friend, make the Word of God a central part of your life. But this week, we're going to be studying partnering with Jesus and working with God, it is a brand new series. I've never taught it before. Partnering with Jesus, working with God, how to work with Jesus to get results in your life. It is so powerful and it comes with a study guide so that you can read it while you see it or while you hear it. Anyway, you can order these by going online or by giving us a call right now. And right now we're offering you my two daily devotionals called Sparkling Gems from the Greek, Volume 1, and Sparkling Gems from the Greek, Volume 2. If you don't already have these, these really are devotionals that you should have in your home. I know they look very daunting because they're so big, but you don't have to read them all at once. You can start with number one and later order number two, or if you already have number two, then you could order number one. It really doesn't matter the order. And you don't have to read the whole book at once because it's a daily devotional. You just read a little bit every day. And with Brother Rick, you walk through the entire New Testament and we dive deep into the Greek language used in the New Testament to extract gems. That's why we call it sparkling gems from the Greek. And my friend, you will love it. In both of these books, there are 1,000 Greek word studies. That is amazing. This is such a resource to feed your spirit and to really make you grow. And if you're crying out to the Lord, saying, Lord, I really want to understand the Bible better. Here is the book that you need. This book will help you understand the Word of God. It is so powerful. But you can order all of these by going online or by giving us a call right now. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, and a partner is anyone who regularly financially sows their financial seed into our ministry. And by the way, when you do that, I believe God will give you a big harvest for thinking about somebody else. When you reach beyond your world and you use your money to make sure the word of God goes to someone else, God will show up in your life. That is partnering with Jesus. And when you partner with Jesus, God moves in your life. That is a promise to partners. And the moment you become a partner, we're going to send you two books. My book called Life in the Combat Zone, which we always give to partners. And Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness. But please remember that if you need somebody to pray with you today, call us. In fact, call us right now. We're waiting for the phone to ring this very moment so we can begin to pray with you. And we promise you that when you reach out to us, whatever you share with us will be held in confidence. Or you can send us an email. And whether you call or whether you write, we will put our faith together with you for God to show up in your life and do something mighty. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust. A message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. I'm doing a brand new series called Partnering with Jesus and Working with God. And yesterday, we looked at the example of the Magi that came to Jesus. They partnered with Him and they worked with God, and what a result they reaped in their lives. But today we're going to look at the next example, so please reach for your Bible. We always use the Bible in this program, and please believe with me for a revival of the Bible in the church. The church needs the Word of God. But open your Bible today to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, which is our anchor verse. And in that verse, it says that we are co-workers together with God. What does that mean, co-workers? Well, in Greek, it is the word soon ergas. The word soon is a preposition that connects you to somebody else. It's not what you do by yourself, but it's what you do in partnership with another person. The second part of the word is from the word ergon. The word ergon describes work, a task, or an assignment. But when you compound the two words together, as in this verse, 
he forms the word sunergas, which pictures two or more that are joined together for a common job or a common task. And the Apostle Paul uses it to tell us we can partner with Jesus and work with God. God wants to work with us. God doesn't do everything for us. In fact, really, if you study throughout the scripture, you'll find that usually when God works mightily, he does it in partnership with someone. And my friends, God wants to work with you. And today we're going to see an example of when Jesus worked with a little boy. He'll work with anybody. So open your Bible to John chapter 6, verse 1, where the Bible says, and after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, verse 2. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. When the Bible says a great multitude, in Greek it says polus oxlus, it describes an enormous multitude. This was a mob of people, and the Bible says they were following him, and the Greek tense means they were following and following and following and following and following and following and following him. It was like Jesus could not get away from the multitude, and every day it was growing larger and larger and larger, and if Jesus turned north, the whole multitude went with him to the north. If he turned west, they all went west. If he went east, they went east. They were following and following and following. Why? The verse says, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And the word saw is a form of the Greek word for a theater. When they saw the power of God erupting right in front of their eyes, it was the best performance they had ever seen. They had never seen anything like it. This was like a theater right in front of their eyes. And they did want, not want to miss a single performance, not a single miracle. And that's why they kept following and following and following and following because they were seeing, they were observing before their eyes, the full drama of the miracles that he was doing on them that were diseased. And the word did is the Greek word poieo. The word poieo carries the idea of creativity, which tells us Jesus wasn't just healing migraine headaches. Jesus was doing creative miracles, creating eyes where there were no eyes, creating arms where there were no arms. These were creative miracles, and the people simply were caught by these. They were stupefied by what they were seeing and they didn't want to miss one of them. So they were following and following. And my friends, if you were with Jesus, there was always something to see. And the Bible goes on to say, which he did on them that were diseased. The word disease describes a person that is frail in health. It pictures those that were feeble, fragile, faint, incapacitated, disabled, and it can also describe those that are in financial need. And I think this is important because when you've been attacked in your health, it usually also affects your finances. But Jesus was healing them. He was making them whole in every area of their life. But then when we come to John chapter 6, verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. This was very near to the city of Capernaum. And Jesus and his disciples in some way had gotten away from the multitude. Now they've gone to the top of a hill and they're reclining there. And from where they are reclining, they can look down. And at the bottom of the hill, there is a first century highway, which went all the way from Damascus, all the way to Egypt. But if you were a Jew living in the north of Israel, this was the road you took to go to Jerusalem. And because the Passover was near, it meant the highway was filled with people traveling from the north all the way to the city of Jerusalem. Thousands upon thousands of people were traveling on that road. And the Bible says in verse 5, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? The word saw, the Greek word theomai, which means Jesus looked at it almost like it was a dramatic presentation in front of him. It also is the word for a theater. He saw the full drama unfolding in front of his eyes, and he saw thousands upon thousands of people departing from the highway, coming up toward him. In fact, the Bible says 
They were coming unto him, the word unto the Greek word pros, it means directly to him. Jesus knew they were all coming to him and it was a great company. The same phrase we saw earlier, polus, oculus, this was a mob. It was thousands of people. It was a massive multitude and they were all coming directly to Jesus. And Jesus said unto Philip, verse five, when shall we buy bread? that these may eat. Well, the word buy, the Greek word agarazzo means to buy, but it's also the word for a marketplace. It is the equivalent of saying, hey, is there a market nearby where we can go buy some food for these folks? But they were on the top of a hill. There was no market nearby. And the Bible says in verse six, and this he said to prove him, for he knew already what he would do. And the word prove means to test in order to reveal a deficiency. Now that is amazing to me because these disciples had been traveling with Jesus and they saw him perform miracle on top of miracle. The masses were following because they were seeing miracle on top of miracle. And if the masses were seeing these miracles, then how many more did the disciples see because they were up close where they could see everything. But now they're confronted with something they've never seen Jesus do, and that is the multiplication of food. And Jesus already knew what he was going to do, but he asked the question, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? In order to show that the disciples still had a deficiency in their faith. With all they've seen and all they've experienced, there's an area of their faith that still needs to come a little higher and now Jesus is going to reveal that to them. That's amazing to me. It doesn't matter how long you walk with the Lord, you always have room to grow. And in verse seven, Philip answered and said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. The word penny worth is the Greek word denarion or denarius, describes a small coin and a denarius was one day's wage. So when he says 200 penny worth or 200 denarius, it was the equivalent of saying, Lord, if we were able to collect 200 days of salary, well, that's a lot of money. Even 200 days of salary is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little and the word little in Greek is brachus. It describes a fragment. Lord, 200 days of salary would not buy enough bread that this crowd, each of them could eat just a small little fragment. It must have been a very big multitude. And in verse 8, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, verse 9, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Well, the word lad is the Greek word paiderion. It's a form of the word pais. The word pais describes a little boy, but when it becomes paiderion, it is even a smaller boy. This possibly was a boy about five or six years old. I want you to see this picture in your mind. Just a little boy, possibly five or six years old, the Greek word paiderion. He says, look, there's a little lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. First of all, barley loaves in Greek really describes a very fragile cracker made out of barley. It would be the equivalent of saying, Lord, there's a little boy over here about five or six years old. He has five little crackers and two small fish. How big were these fish? Well, the Bible says they were small. It describes a fish about the size of a minnow or a sardine, and usually they were pickled or they were dried. They were a favorite food among the people. And now here is a little boy with five crackers and basically two minnows. And it's likely that this little boy had tucked this food into one of his pockets and he was going to eat it on the way to the city of Jerusalem. But now the disciples are on a food search trying to find a way to feed this multitude when suddenly Andrew says, Lord, 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 maybe we have a solution. I found a five or six year old boy with five crackers and two little minnows. And then he says, but what are they among so many? The word what is the Greek word T. It describes something minute, something minuscule. He's looking at these five crackers and these two small fish, realizing how tiny they are in comparison to the multitude. And that's why he goes on to say, what are they among so many? So many in Greek means 
compared to this great, great multitude? Well, honestly, his suggestion is ridiculous, and you're going to see in a moment how big the multitude really was. But then in John 6, verse 10, Jesus said, Make the men set down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Well, first of all, the word men is the Greek word andres, not the word anthropos. If it was the word anthropos, it would have described all of the people, but this is the word andres, which refers only to husbands or heads of households. So Jesus said, have the men, the husbands, the head of households sit down. And of course, they sat down with their wives and with all of their children. And, G and the verse says, there was much grass in the place. I'm sure the disciples saw this as a crisis, but Jesus saw grass. What a wonderful place to have a picnic. He says, have everybody sit down. And when you read the other gospels, it says that he organized them into family groups and clans, and they all begin to sit down together. And they were told that soon they would begin to eat. But the disciples knew all they had was five crackers and two little fish. And the verse says, so the men sat down in number about five so there were 5,000 men, 5,000 husbands, or 5,000 heads of households. But when you add their wives and their children and everyone traveling with them, it is estimated that in this crowd there were about 40,000 people. How in the world are you going to break five little crackers and two little fish into such small pieces that you can feed 40,000 people? And that is why he said, but what are they? among so many. But in verse 11, Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were sat down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. But notice the very first of verse 11. This is so very important. Jesus took the loaves. Standing in front of Jesus was a little boy, a lad. The Greek word pyderion, probably five or six years old. He has wisely planned a little snack that he's going to eat on the way to Jerusalem. Just as he reaches into his pocket to pull out his five crackers and his two small minnow, someone yells and says, don't eat that food, don't eat that food. The master needs that food. Suddenly they pick up the little boy, run to the top of the hill, and the little boy is standing in front of Jesus. And Jesus says, Matt, please have your crackers and your minnows. Well, they belonged to the little boy. And the little boy had every right to say, no, these belong to me. I've planned all day. I've been waiting for this. These are my crackers. These are my minnows. I have jurisdiction over them. I have the right to eat them. And if the little boy had decided that he would retain them, Jesus probably would have blessed him and he would have eaten them. And that would have been the end of the crackers and the minnows. But the little boy surrendered what was in his hands. He partnered with Jesus and he worked with God. And my friends, when you yield something to Jesus, he will take it. And that's what you find in this verse. And I have to ask you, what is Jesus asking you to give him today? My friends, he's going to give it back to you in full and much more, but you're the one that has to put it in his hands. And if you'll put it in his hands, he'll take it. And that's what this verse says. Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, wow, given thanks is so very important. The Greek word eukaristeo, it describes one whose heart is so filled with thanksgiving that it just flows out of his heart. He wasn't focusing on the small amount in his hands. Jesus had lifted his eyes and was looking to the Father and began to worship the Father. And as he worshiped and gave thanks, the food in his hands began to supernaturally multiply, and he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would, the Greek means literally as much as they would, which meant the whole crowd was saying, hey, can I please have another serving of those crackers? Hey, can you please bring some more of those fish over here? And the disciples were running back and forth all over the side of the mountain, bringing more crackers and more fish that were being multiplied in the hands of Jesus. And verse 12 says, and when they were filled, 
The word filled is called pluperfect in Greek. It means doubly filled, filled to the brim. They ate so much, they had no more room for anything else in their stomachs. They're laying on their sides, holding their sides, saying, why did I eat so much? It's like you may feel after Thanksgiving or Christmas holidays when you've eaten and eaten and eaten. Now these people are laying on their sides, doubly filled, filled to the brim. They can't eat anymore. When they were filled, he saith unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. And the Bible says, listen to this, this amazing verse. It says, and therefore they gathered together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. And when the Bible says that remained, the word remained is a Greek word that describes something that's overflowing, something that exists that is out of measure, beyond proportion, far stretched, something that is incomparable, unsurpassed, unequaled, unrivaled by anything. In other words, crackers were laying everywhere. That's amazing. And verse 14 says, Then those men, speaking of the disciples, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. Well, if that is how the disciples were affected, how do you think the little boy was affected? Let's talk about that little boy. Five or six years old, ready to eat his crackers and his fish, but he decides to put them into the hands of Jesus, not knowing that he's about to partner with Jesus and work with God. And when he puts his crackers and his fish into the hands of Jesus, he watches those crackers and the fish be multiplied and multiplied and multiplied. And at the end of the day, I can just see the little boy walking up and down the sides of the hill, seeing people laying on their sides saying, oh, why did I eat so much? And thousands and thousands of crackers laying everywhere. Now the disciples picking up all the fragments that remain, 12 basketfuls of crackers and fish. But no one understood the miracle like the little boy because he was the one who surrendered what was in his hand. And he could say, wow. And to think all of this started with my crackers and my fish. I gave Jesus what was in my hand and look what has happened. And that's what happens when we partner with God. When we partner with God, supernatural things take place. He releases increase beyond our imagination. So much increase that it almost seems far-fetched. But that's what happens when you put what is in your hand into the hands of Jesus. What is Jesus asking you to put into his hand today? He wants you to partner with him and work with God, and he will bring dramatic results back into your life. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. How can you partner with Jesus and work with God to help advance the gospel and get supernatural results in your life? Is there a practical way you can really partner with Jesus and work with God? In this five-part series, Partnering with Jesus and Working with God, Rick Renner opens the scriptures to show us practical ways and biblical examples of how to partner with Jesus and work with God to advance the gospel and see supernatural results in your life. All it takes is a right decision to open the door for the supernatural. In this series, Rick covers biblical examples of a decision to partner with Jesus from the very beginning, a decision by a small boy to partner with Jesus, a decision to partner with Jesus that brought dramatic results, a decision by women to partner with Jesus' ministry, a decision to partner with Jesus to the end. This powerful series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $10. In addition to this teaching series, you can also get the book Sparkling Gems from the Greek Volumes 1 and 2. In these books, Rick unlocks the brilliant treasures within God's Word and shows you how to live an intimate, uncompromising life with God in an easy-to-read devotional format. Each volume of Sparkling Gems explores more than 1,000 in-depth Greek word studies. Order Sparkling Gems 1 for just $40 and Sparkling Gems 2 for only $45. Don't miss this special offer of the series Partnering with Jesus and Working with God and the book Sparkling Gems 1 and 2. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now.
Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In Mark 16, 15 and 16, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. At Rick Renner Ministries, that is our mission. Would you consider partnering with us in the work? Together, we can multiply our results as we join hands to reach, teach, strengthen, and rescue lives for the kingdom of God. For more information, visit our website at renner.org. Well, yesterday we saw what happened when the Magi partnered with Jesus at the time of his childhood. That was amazing. And today we saw what happened when the little boy took what was in his hand and he put it into the hands of Jesus. And my friends, when you put whatever you have in your hand into the hands of Jesus, he will take it, he will multiply it, he will do more with it than you could ever do with it by yourself. But I want you to get the whole series, which is called Partnering with Jesus and Working with God, How to Work with Jesus to Get Results in Your Life. When you partner with God and become a co-worker together with Him, it puts you in a position for the supernatural abundance of God to flow into your life. By the way, this comes with a study guide. And right now we're also offering you my daily devotionals called Sparkling Gems from the Greek number one and Sparkling Gems from the Greek number two. If you don't have these, please order yours today and it would be a great gift to give to somebody else. But you can order all of these things by going online. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying thank you for becoming a part of our family my book called Life in the Combat Zone and the Gift of Forgiveness. And my friends, I want to tell you that when you become a partner, you're going to become a partner with Jesus. You're going to begin working with God. It's going to come back to you. God is going to bless you. And remember that we're here to pray for you. So let us know how to pray by calling us or by sending us your email. But Father, thank you that you want what is in our hands, not to take it from us, but because you want to do something great with it and multiply it back to us. We thank you for this. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow, but please remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, which says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.